Hi, I'm Mary Tinetti, Chief of Geriatrics at Yale. I'm here with Anna Nayak, Chief of Geriatrics at Baylor College of Medicine, and Claire Davenport, a geriatrician at Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City. We are part of the team that developed patient priorities care, which involves aligning decisions and care with the health priorities of older adults with multiple chronic conditions. Hopefully you've completed the introduction to patient priorities care. If you haven't, you may want to take a quick look at those slides. We are driving right in patient priorities line decision making here. Assuming that you have some familiarity with the problems patient priorities care addresses and who it's best for. If you haven't gone through the patient priorities care facilitator slides, the introduction also gives a brief exp explanation of how patients priorities are identified and what information is obtained. We'll talk today about how to translate patients priorities into healthcare decisions. We present a few strategies and offer some tips and scripts on how to make decisions and how to communicate with patients with multiple chronic conditions around their priorities. We then discuss how to address common challenges you may face in implementing patient priorities care. Portions of this presentation are interactive. You will get most out of this training by trying your own decision making when prompted. Don't worry, there aren't any right or wrong answers. There is a lot here, so you may want to break this into a few sessions. There are two steps to patient priorities care. The first step is identifying a patient's health priorities, and the second step is to align care with these priorities. By health priorities, we mean patients' health outcome goals and care preferences. Health outcome goals are the things patients most want to do in their life that they want their health care to help them with, given the care preferences for health care that they're willing and able to do. These include things like health care tasks, medications, procedures, self-management activities, and health care visits. The first step of patient priorities care involves identifying patients' health priorities. And this was discussed in a previous module and we will summarize it here in this module. In the current module, we will explain how to do this second step and give you an idea about what happens in aligning care with patients' health priorities and to show you an example of how it works. So now we're going to talk about what happens for a patient who you identify as someone who would benefit from patient priorities care in your clinic. We will go through several encounters with Mrs. B, and together we will explore how to align her care to help her to achieve her priorities. Mrs. B is a 75-year-old. Her story is typical for an older adult with multiple chronic conditions. She has atrial fibrillation, diabetes, depression, gastroesophageal reflux disease, a few hospitalizations for a GI bleed, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, hypertension, sleep apnea, osteoarthritis, and osteoporosis. She sees a number of specialists in addition to you. Often her main complaint during these visits include a combination of fatigue, dyspnea, pain, and urinary frequency. Recently, she's been bothered by some aspects of her health care. She has hand arthritis and was taking NSAIDs that produced an upper GI bleed for which she was hospitalized for a few days. She also takes a diuretic for heart failure, but it's caused some increasing urinary frequency and maybe even some incontinence, which is upsetting to her. Attempts to decrease her diuretic led to some worsening dyspnea. You aren't really sure what she is taking as she is reluctant now to let you know. Mrs. B's case exemplifies the complexity of decision-making with multiple conditions. Her clinicians are faced with uncertainty about her care, uncertainty that arises because of the balancing of competing conditions. In Mrs. B's case, the treatment for one condition, her heart failure, for example, can exacerbate another condition, such as her incontinence or urinary frequency. Her treatments that help one condition may potentially cause harm or may become more burdensome for another condition. Another example could be the use of NSAIDs which can often produce a GI bleed. 
Given the general frustration and not being sure how best to approach her care given the recent adverse events, Mrs. B's primary clinician, Dr. T, asks one of her medical assistants to identify Mrs. B's priorities. This medical assistant has been trained in patient priorities care identification. A patient's priorities can be identified by any number of health healthcare professionals, such as a medical assistant, nurses, APRNs, care coordinators, social workers, or physicians. We also have an online website, myhealthpriorities.org, where patients and their family members can do this on their own and bring in their completed health priorities template. Here is a template from Mrs. B's session to identify her health priorities. Ideally, this template is made available in your patient's electronic health record to review during your visit. It includes what matters most, the patient's values that reflect what is important in life that don't tend to change over time. Next are health outcome goals. These are the things that are specific, realistic, and actionable and linked to what is most meaningful to them. This is what they would like to achieve in their life. The template provides healthcare preferences, which includes both things such as self-management tasks, healthcare visits, test procedures, and medications that they find valuable and helpful and that they're willing and able to do as well and also things such as self-management tasks, visits, tests, and medications that they find burdensome, too difficult, or not helpful. These are useful to know because it may be the reason for non-adherence and may identify care that can be changed. In the final step, the patient identifies the one thing, a health problem, symptom, or other item that they most want to focus on initially because it's interfering with their health outcome goals. The one thing helps you and the patient get started in aligning care with their priorities. Let's review what Mrs. B said, and then we'll discuss how this information can streamline your decision making for medically complex patients. In Mrs. B's case, she has two specific, measurable, meaningful health outcome goals. One, she wants to be able to watch her grandchildren after school for about two or three times a week. Two, she wants to be able to volunteer at a library two times weekly and to be able to handle the books while at the library. You can begin to see how these health outcome goals can inform your medical thinking and decisions. The interplay among a number of her chronic conditions are likely affecting her ability to achieve these goals. To be active with her grandchildren two to three times a week, she needs several hours without getting short of breath or fatigued. To work in the library, she needs to be able to hold books without having pain and have enough endurance to walk around and reshelf the books. First, you should consider which of her conditions might be affecting the abilities she needs to achieve her goals. Then start thinking about her current care which might be helping or hurting these abilities. It gets a bit more complicated because it has some healthcare preferences that need to be considered. She's willing to do some things like exercise, physical therapy, and to some extent, laboratory tests and imaging. She's willing to do some medications if they're tolerable or helpful, but she's on a lot of medications and some of them are causing trouble. She doesn't really want to take all these medications. She also hates her CPAP machine and probably avoids it a lot of the time. She wants to stay out of the hospital as much as possible. As you can see, her main complaint is her fatigue. The one thing that's important to her that she wants you to focus on is to be less tired so that she can watch her grandchildren. With this information, it's time to start thinking about caring for patients like Mrs. B. Please pause and answer the following questions. It's best to write down your answers. Remember, there isn't a right answer. So here are our questions. What challenges do you face when taking care of patients like Mrs. B? How might you make decisions that are consistent with Mrs. B's priorities? 
What trade-offs arise when aligning care with Mrs. B's priorities? In the next slides, we are going to discuss these trade-offs and considerations. And then we're going to identify some strategies to help us partner with Mrs. B to help her achieve her health outcome goals. Let's review some challenges in aligning decisions with the patient's healthcare priorities. The first is uncertainty, which we talked about in the introduction to patient priorities care. There's uncertainty about which conditions are most affecting what matters to Mrs. B and about what is the right treatment for her offending conditions. In persons with multiple conditions, there's always uncertainty of benefits and harms of individual treatments given competing conditions. There is often no right or best option. And often we are left wondering where to start given these complexities. Another challenge comes from having different perspectives among patients, caregivers, and clinicians. Or it may be that the patient and the family member together have a different perspective than the clinician. A common situation occurs when the patient is focused on how they're doing today and the clinician is focused on preventing future bad events. An older adult with multiple chronic conditions might come in with concerns about a bothersome symptom they want taken care of. For example, he might say, I'm getting too dizzy from this blood pressure medicine. That's the most important thing for me. The clinician is appropriately concerned about adverse events related to poorly managed hypertension, such as stroke or heart failure. So the clinician is concerned about longer term outcomes that the treatment may prevent, but the patient is bothered by something that's much more immediate. There's a trade-off that exists here. What do we do next? Differing perspectives among clinicians can also be a challenge. This may occur between the primary clinician and a specialist, or between two specialists who are focused on their specific disease. Clinicians may vary in how and whether current evidence or guidelines apply to a specific patient. How do you broach these differences in perspective, which may lead to conflicting recommendations to the patient? A clinician may differ on which conditions to focus on or which outcomes to target. The cardiologist's job, for example, is to worry about a heart attack or a stroke, and they are focused on getting the blood pressure down. Another clinician realizes that raising the antihypertensive dose is causing fatigue and dizziness and is worried about a fall or even a hip fracture. Let's talk about what to do in these and other challenging situations in the care of older adults with multiple chronic conditions. You are now familiar with this figure that shows the two steps involved in patient priorities care. We are now going to address the second step, how to align care with patients' health priorities and give you examples of how this can be done. As you can see from the figure, Aligning care with patients' priorities involves first considering whether current or other potential interventions are consistent with the patient's priorities. And then, based on this information, using three relatively simple strategies to discuss and decide what care to recommend and implement. Let's look at the components of this step. When the focus becomes achieving patients' priorities rather than solely treating each chronic condition, it becomes necessary to consider among all the patient's conditions and treatments which are most likely contributing to the bothersome health problem that is impeding the person achieving their most desired outcomes. The answer is often, but not usually, several conditions or treatments. In Mrs. B's example, you might think that her sleep apnea, heart failure, depression, and several of her medications are likely contributing to the fatigue that is keeping her from being able to babysit her grandchildren. This step is the one that you may be least familiar with because we often look at what is helpful or not for each condition, often in isolation, rather than what is helpful or not for the, for the patient's specific health goals. 
It will take you a while to get comfortable doing this, but don't skip this activity as it's crucial to aligning care with patients' health priorities. Once you've identified contributing conditions or treatments, consider what changes in medications, tests, procedures, tasks, or other supportive services are most likely to improve the bothersome health problem that she feels is interfering with her goal. In Mrs. B's case, it's her fatigue. Next, you want to think about any potential beneficial interventions within the context of what the patient considers helpful or doable versus burdensome or unhelpful. In Mrs. B's case, she found exercise and diuretics acceptable, while CPAP, defibrillator, and some other medications were sometimes burdensome or unwanted. Patients are more adherent to their plans of care when those plans align with, the, with, with what they are willing and able to do to achieve their goals. However, the fact that the patient identifies an intervention that is burdensome or unwanted does not mean that we should not offer it if we thought it was particularly likely to address the health problem or help the individual reach their goals. Rather, this information helps us identify the trade-offs that we need to discuss with our patients. You may also want to consider which current treatments are unlikely to help Mrs. B achieve her goals. These treatments are potential targets for reduction or discontinuation, particularly if she identified them as burdensome or if they may be contributing to her fatigue. Following these steps helps you to arrive at two to four interventions to discuss. Any more than that might become overwhelming, but you may then have some remaining options in reserve for subsequent trials if needed. There are three intersecting strategies that have come out of our work with clinicians and patients over the past five years, as well as our own clinical experiences caring for older adults with multiple chronic conditions for several decades. These are certainly not the only ways to translate patients' priorities into care, but they have proven feasible, practical, and helpful, so we consider them a good foundation for getting started. While these strategies may be obvious, we suggest you use them consistently and intentionally as they focus the decision-making and conversations on priorities, not just diseases. As you can see on the slide here, the strategies are one, to use patients' priorities as the focus of communication and decision-making. Two, to develop serial trials based on the patient's priorities to identify op optimal interventions. And three, to align decision-making among clinicians with the identified priorities, particularly where there are different perspectives or recommendations among the clinicians. You'll be learning how to use these strategies in the next session. To support your exploration and learning of this approach to medical decision-making, we have an online patient priorities decisional guidance tool. A link to this tool is at the bottom of the slide. It would be helpful for you to open this tool and practice scripts throughout the following segment and during your encounters with patients.